pole position here at Salem. The last race bef before the fark of the cider is Mike Malone. Anthony Griffith starts on the outside of the front row. Row number two has Kevin Monroe and Don Mayado. Another great qualifying effort for the 462. Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Kelly Splison in row number three. Row number four brings Jason Bates and Bob Stephens. As row number five brings in ninth place Billy Bob Childers and in tenth Kenny Brillen. 11th is Julia Ashcroft and 12th Monica Rook. Ashcroft making her third fark start in her career. Joshua Pacer and Kenny George III share row number 7. Row number 8, Riley Durbin and Gio Arias. Row number 9, Dunlack Leiter and Ashley Tucker. And in row number 10, 19th is Stanley Parsons and 20th, Jim Kidd. 11th, Johnson Clapp for Wild West Racing and Todd Stater, championship leader. Chuck Johnson and Lev Azarov share row number 12, row number 13, Taylor Brillen and Zach Gott. Row off number 14 has Zach Webster and John Burr, great qualifying effort for John Burr. And row 15, Bradley Carlisle and Jeff Faliani Miha should have qualified better. Row 16, Aubrey Woods and Rebel Denman and in row 17, Stan Coleman and Tristan Kristoff, 14 Burr. And taking the rear of the field, Troy Peterson and Kirby Krieger. Let's go trackside for the start of the race. Malone leads the field to the green. Green flag is in the air. And he has a good start over Anthony Griffith and already picks the middle line to make his first works on track. However, Griffith already has a look on the inside and makes the move for the lead as Don Mayado takes third, Kelly Splasson takes fourth, and Anthony Griffith is going to lead the first lap here at Salem. And for the first few laps, Anthony Griffith would open a big, big lead as in the middle of the field, Jason Bates. And Bates has a problem, stops right in front of Jim Kidd and all the field has to slow down. And Bates goes down, there's contact between Stanley Parsons, Bradley Carlisle and Billy Bob Childers and that is the first caution of the race and there's more contact as Tristan Kristoff hits the 68. And now Bill, um, Bradley Carlisle tries to go into the pits, he gets hit by Mike Malone and Don Mayado and Billy Bob Childers as Stan Coleman held them up and that's a big trouble that has no reason to be happening as it was bigger than the caution that initially caused it. So, a uh, good display of idiocracy by our drivers with only two races remaining for the Farkoff. Anthony Griffith chooses to pit and not gamble on fuel or tires. Bob Stephens leads the field to the green and he has a good start. There's quite a few drivers on the tail end of the lead lap as Troy Peterson in the double zero, Kirby Krieger already lapped and he does not hold the drivers a lot as Kenny Brillen now places himself in second as Bob Stephens goes around the double zero, Kenny Brillen right behind and Stan Coleman holding the whole field and Monica Rook, there's a caution as Monica Rook gets tagged by uh, <clears throat> Johnson Clapp hits the wall, Billy Bob Childers also goes into the wall Bob Stephens leads the field to the green, Jason Bates is also, has also been lapped Halfway through the, halfway through these cautions, these early cautions, as Ke as Kenny Brillen opens the gap, as John Burr currently running in the side of the top 20, and Kirby Krieger into the wall. And Vazarov also with a few problems up there, but no caution. They keep it safe. They keep it going. As Bob Stephens goes around there, uh, I believe that's. Uh, I don't know who is in the 68. It may be Tristan Kristoff, I'm not sure who even drives for Team Burr at this point in time. As battle for third place is between Kelly Splison, Kenny George III and Kevin Monroe. Kirby Krieger now holding the field, holding Joshua Pacer. Pacer gets into the back of Krieger. Krieger bogs down and gets turned by Pacer. Bob Stephens is involved, your race leader. And it's a big trouble. Kenny Brillen also involved. Joshua Pacer, Billy Bob Childers. Um, Todd Stater, your championship leader, also involved. And due to the damage sustained in this crash, Bob Stephens chooses to head into the pits to make sure his car is still runnable, to make sure the car is not with big issues. Kenny George III uh, 
gets the lead by default. He is the second place in the championship and he just slapped the driver that is right ahead of him in the championship standing Stott Stater. However, I don't think they should worry about that since the Farkoff is starting soon and they're pretty much locked in as Troy Peterson into the wall and he goes around and that's another caution. Thankfully nobody hits him, but once again, yellow flag is in the air. As Kelly Splicer now leads the field to the green, Kenny George took this opportunity to pit. Zach Gott is second, Kenny Brillen third. Joshua Pacer into the pits right after the restart as Splicer opens a big gap and there's a car around i think it's billy bob chuders he is he just bogs down breaks down stops on track and that's another one as plyson leads the field to the green as chuders is not done for the day however he still keeps it going and Splicing opens a big, big gap as soon as the restart happens. Kenny Brillen now trying to hold on Kenny George for second place as they catch up to Splicing. Lev Azarov currently running in fourth, fifth is Zach Gott having a great run as Kenny Brillen now looks to make a move on Splicing on the outside. Makes a big, big move for the lead of the race. However, Splicing is right behind him as he gets held up by Kirby Krieger. However, he takes none of that, goes around Krieger and keeps the lead. Splicing will have to try again later as Kenny George gets held up by Krieger and now Lavazarov takes third place as Joshua Pacer merges right back on track. Causes Almost caused a big amount of trouble as Stan Coleman hits the wall. He's fine right in front of the leaders. However, a couple of laps later, he goes around from the same spot and causes another caution. I believe that's the second caution he causes. And right behind that, Kenny George went into the pits. So he's gonna lose a lap because he pitted right before Coleman went around, therefore he is one lap behind from 4th place. Kenny Brillen leads the way, Kelly Splison running 2nd, and Jim Kidd, lap car running in the top 15, trying to catch up to the guys up front. And as you can see, I believe that's Taylor Brillen running up front as well, and Stan Coleman goes around once again right after the restart, that's the third caution Coleman causes today I believe. Sorry about this Lord as Kelly Splison heads into the pits and Kelly Berlin also heads into the pits. Splison got lapped. This leaves Bob Stephens in the lead. Zach got on the tail end of the lead lap and we only have, I believe, five cars on the lead lap as Zach got is on the tail end of it. Riley Durbin running second. Third place is Julia Ashcroft. Fourth is Lev Azarov and fifth is Billy Ray Smith Thompson. These are your drivers on the lead lap at the current moment. Due to the caution caused by Coleman, everybody pitted except those five, which they had already pitted as Riley Durbin with a tire going down. Bob Stephens also with problems, both going to the pits due to some debris that was not clean from the track. They head into the pits with, uh, with blown tires. Ashcroft takes this opportunity to lead as Lev Azarov follows her closely. And Ashcroft having a bit of difficulty to lap Jafali Animiha, making his first fart start in quite a while. I think his last start was around 2012 2011. Billy Ray Smith Thompson currently running in third place. Kevin Monroe running in fourth, right behind Smith Thompson, trading him down. Kenny Brillen running fifth. And running in 6th place is Kenny George, 7th will be, I believe, it will be Bradley Carlisle, and close in 8th place is Bob Stephens, Ninth, I believe it is Riley Durbin, as Stephens has a few problems, threads the needle between Clapp and Krieger, and just runs away with the position, and he stays in 8th place, doesn't get held up at all, and Ashcroft now looking to lap the driver in ninth as Stan Coleman into the wall again almost costs Ashcroft and Lev Azarov their races and Azarov on the outside treads the needle makes the move goes for the lead and takes it successfully almost gets wiped out by Kirby Krieger who comes down on him from the outside and Billy Ray Smith Thompson following them closely and now Azarov gets held up by Tristan Kristoff who has no fault at all, it's only his car that is extremely slow. 
And Stan Coleman now once again holding everybody up. Hits the wall, comes down into Billy Bob Childers, and that's his fourth caution involves Joe Arias, who had nothing to do and becomes an innocent bystander. As we go past the halfway point, this race has gone by quick. We only have four drivers on the lead lap. Azarov, Ashcroft, Smith Thompson, and Monroe. These are your only drivers on the lead lap at the current moment. And Ashcroft looking to make the move on Azarov, but she can't quite do it. Stan Coleman into the wall, and that's his fifth caution for his caution tally. And he gets hit by Troy Peterson and Billy, Ray and Billy Bob Childers. That's another caution. The 82 of Azarov leads once again as we reach the final fifth. As we slowly are creeping into the final 50 laps, Ashley Tucker into the back of Stanley Parsons on the restart and involves Joe Arias, Zach Gott, Aubrey Wood also gets involved. Todd Stater almost ended up hitting the 83. And another restart happens this time with Kevin Monroe on the lead. All the drivers on the lead lap went to the pits. Monroe came out in first. And he already opens a big, big gap over Ashcroft. Ashcroft getting held up by Monica Rook. And now Carlisle trying to make him move on his own. Trying to recover his lap and, and rejoin the battle for the win. And Monroe just opened a big, big gap. And he might just as well run away with this race as we reach the final 50 laps. And he has 10 Coleman and... Uh, Tristan Kristoff and Tristan Kristoff hits the wall, almost hits Stan Coleman and ends his own race right there. And Kevin Monroe must be having flashes of his last 150 laps by running right behind Coleman because Coleman has been a weapon. And not in the good meaning, if there's any good meaning to weapon. As Troy Peterson into the wall and that's the third caution Peterson causes today. And... Well, once again, everyone decides to pit to get fresher tires. Lav Azarov leads the way. Dan Lighter now places himself in between Monroe and Azarov. And Julia Ashcroft running in third place, trying to catch up to the 63. Ashcroft having a great return to park racing. I believe her last race uh, before this year as Bradley Carlisle breaks down and his day goes all right was in 2014 I believe it was in 2014 her last race and in the and at the same time Troy Peterson fourth caution of his doing and and he goes around causing the yellow black Bradley Carlisle got saved by that because he would have lost many many laps if that caution hadn't happened and now Monroe and Azarov fight for the lead and possibly the win as both drivers do not have wins and they need the victory to to lock themselves into the far cough. There's another caution as that god gets into the back of Tristan Kristoff. Kristoff bounces into the folly Animiha, into John Burr, into Todd Stater, Johnson Clap, and the nine of Taylor Brillen. That's another big crash as we reach the final 20 laps. And Azarov has been retaining the lead by sheer amount of cautions. Nobody has been able to take him out of the lead because nobody has had time to, to make a move. Because we have been having so much cautions in the sequence. And that will happen once again as Bob Stephens chasing down Riley Durbin almost gets wiped out by Stan Coleman. Coleman on the outside and this is a lot of trouble. And then there's contact between Griffin and Stephens' teammates. And that's a great display of teamwork. Kelly Splison was having a nice run and hits Bob Stephens to turn her day into a bit worse than it was after uh, the caution problems that set her back quite a few laps. And Lab Azarov leads the way as we reach the final 10 laps. Kirby Krieger gets hit by Monica Rook, gets hit by Stan Coleman, flips around, gets all his wheels in the air. And that's another caution by Coleman and Peterson. Only three laps remain as Lev Azarov leads the field to the green. Kevin Monroe is second. Julia Ashcroft third. Billy Ray Smith Thompson fourth. And the top four is all together right now. And Monroe trying to make a move on the inside. However, this does not work. And Lev Azarov takes the two laps to go, Mark. And he continues to hold his own as this is another camera angle from the same happening. 
and Monroe trying to catch up, however, he is unable to. White flag is in the air for lap. As a row, only one lap remains, and he has held his own with the help of the cautions that consequently happened. However, a win is a win, and it matters even though he kept the lead due to the amount of cautions rounding out turns 3 and 4 to take the win here at Salem. Left as a rob. Kevin Monroe finishes in second place. Julia Ashcroft holds on third. Great result for her. Billy Ray Smith Thompson, last car on the lead lap, and he takes fourth place. Chuck Johnson finishes up his day in fifth. And sixth is Kenny George. Zach got set, uh, seventh place. Todd Stater eighth, so he does not lose the championship lead to Kenny George, despite having problems of his own. Uh, Riley Durbin ninth place. Jim Kidd closes. A uh, bit of a lackluster day in 10th place, a better result than he probably predicted he would have with all the problems he had today. Anthony Griffith 11th, Ashley Tucker 12th, Stanley Parsons fell to 13th, but did better than what he probably could have done. Jafali Animiha 14th, Bob Stephens fell like a rock to 15th, Kelly Splison 16th place after having a good first half of the event. Jason Bates had problems all around and brings a great result in 17th. Monica Rook finishes up in 18th in the modified. Gio Arias 19th and then left lighter. 20th place probably should have not finished in the top 30 with the amount of problems he had and the amount of setbacks he had. The championship standings have Todd Stater, Kenny George, Lev Azarov, Billy Ray Smith Thompson, Kevin Monroe, Bob Stephens, Bradley Carlisle, Ben Lackleiter, Stanley Parsons, and Monica Rook in the top 10. And right now, qualified by wins is the top 3. Stater, George, and Azarov are in the top 3 in the championship standings by wins. If anyone between Smith Thompson and Rook win the next two, one of the next two races that happen in Texas, the Farkoff Deciders, then we might have up to Riley Durbin and Jim Kidd joining the Farkoff fray as there's a few drivers like Mariano Zavala that may fall out of contention if they do not start next, uh, the next race. So the current situation can get a bit sketchy for those guys despite having great runs in other races. And as you can see, Ashley Tucker trying to catch up to Jim Kidd, Zach Gott, Billy Bob Children's Joe Arias is 16th, Jason Bates 17th place. Despite having only a few starts, I don't think he had 6, 7 starts, showing the great consistency he has had despite not having nearly as many starts as Joe Arias has had. Chuck, or Chuck Johnson. Chuck Johnson has had a very lackluster season. Zach Webster and Kelly Splison doing better than what pre people predicted to them but it's still not good uh, given the cars they have. In the Farkoff current situation, we would have Mark Thompson, who isn't even in the top 20 in the standings, leading the championship, entering the first race of the championship playoffs, as he has two victories. And then you'd have Todd Stater, Kenny George, and Lev Azarov sharing the second, third, and fourth positions. Johnson Clapp in 29th place, Joshua Pacer, Leslie Riggs, and Mariano Zavala are also qualified by wins. The next race in the Fark season will be the last race before the playoffs at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. We'll see each other soon.